G'day fellas and welcome back to another Age of Empires 4 cast. We're going to be taking a look at DFP who last game went for a fast Imperial on the English and the question is going to be whether he looks to go for it again. This guy is notoriously, and I say notoriously, notoriously greedy. He loves to go for these kind of cheesy, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to call them cheesy strategies where you go for 2TC, 3TC, that kind of thing. And I'm, I'm curious whether he's going to go for it today. I suspect he probably will because he's playing up against the Chinese. Now, let's introduce our first player on the south side. Who's in the color green on the Chinese? It is, of course, the one and only Wallalo God himself. It is Salami. And in the north side, we already spoke a bit about him. It's Divine DFP playing on the English in the blue. Now, I'm going to leave links in the description where you can watch these guys live over on Twitch if you're interested in checking them out. But let's get into it. Let's talk a little bit about this matchup because this is a fun matchup, one that is normally going to be something that is orientated towards the late game. And that's just largely because that's where these civilizations' strengths rely. Or not rely, but lie. Uh, and uh, speaking of lying, hello. Excuse me, sir, but you may have missed a couple of sheep over here. Now, this is to be expected. When the early game is happening, there's so many things going on. You just kind of wonder, you know, where, where is all that attention going? Where's all that APM going? And I suspect Salami's probably got his attention down here on the uh, on the on the, the bottom side of the Chinese base. Now, one of the things to note in in this matchup is when it comes to the late game, I'm still a little bit. I feel a little bit undecided about who is the better civilization here. You've got the Chinese, which are notorious, right? When it comes to the late game, they have been a powerhouse for a long time, but they were nerfed. They were brought down to reasonable levels because they they went from being, you know, S++ tier to being S++ tier. And then you've got the English who have actually been very recently nerfed. We've seen nerfs to a whole bunch of different aspects of their late game. Number one is enclosures was reduced. The uh, it, it used to be one gold every 3.5 seconds. Now it's one gold every five seconds. They also reduced the network of citadels, network of castles. It used to be 20% here that you get. Now it's only 15%. They nerfed a whole bunch of stuff that the English uh, get. Uh, they, they also nerfed trebuchets, which is what the English love to uh, make. Uh, but uh, we saw a whole bunch of idle vills there. Never mind. He's, they've been fixed up. But the English light game has been nerfed quite a bit. And I, I considered them to be the premium uh, late game civilization before the nerfs. Where they sit now, though, that is going to be a question that remains unanswered. But I think we might get that answer today. Something tells me that these two guys are going to be looking to have a fast period Imperial off. The last game that we casted between these two guys, it was the exact same thing. Uh, we had uh, Salami who was going for the Holy Roman Empire or playing the Holy Roman Empire. He went for a fast Imperial, 12 minutes. Divine followed him up with a fast Imperial. It was, I think, 13 minutes, maybe 14 minutes. It was pretty damn quick. In this matchup, it's pretty much the same thing. What you normally see out of the Chinese, it's two town centers coming out with the Song Dynasty, then into Fast Castle. Salami, you can see him already on the moves here, looking to put down that Imperial Academy. It's going to be a bit of an awkward spot here. He might be... I don't. There's no way that gets the wood line. So he's going to miss out on his wood line, but should pick up his milk here, should pick up the mining camp. Actually, might pick up the wood line here towards the front of the base, but it's a bit of a weird spot. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Other side of the map, though... DFP has put down the council hall. And I just want to say something. We, we talked about it in the last game, how good of a base builder D Divine is. So uh, for anybody who's wondering, I'm calling him Divine. That's his main. His main is Divine DFP. Here we, he is playing under Dio Favente Perennis, which I'm, I'm sure probably means something in Latin or Italian or Spanish. Uh, not not Spanish. Maybe Spanish. Who knows? Uh, but I don't, I don't know what it means. Um, so I, I just want to compliment him once again for just this council hall positioning. A lot of people... They drop the council hall. They're like, oh, gold vein. The gold vills are dropping the council hall. I'm going to put it right here on the gold vein. I'm like, yeah, okay, sure, that works. But this is important space, right? Like, this is this is important real estate that we need back up here. There needs to be a town center coming down. Now, I don't think you're going to fit a town center here, but you need a town center there. And if you can't fit a town center there, you can't fit a council hall there. But I, I just want to say, like, well done to him because it, it's highly likely that he had the resources to drop this council hall down sooner than what he did but he walked it out here to drop it down and i got mad respect for that a guy who likes to base build and look look at this look at this just pixel perfect base building all right other side of the map though we're right on board with salami as he's going for a bit of a far barbican not something that we always see coming out from china often you'll look to see barbican on like the gold or something like that especially up against the english where the likelihood that they're going for early longbows is pretty high but against divine a guy a bit more greedy uh, I suspect Salami is going to be like, you know what? I can just, I can go slow with this Barbican. Now, let's take a look at this Barbican. Judge this positioning. It's going on the sacred site and the gold. Now, remember the Barbican has been changed. I, I'd say recently, but it's like last six months. So it's not really recent. 
The, the Barbican has been changed where it actually acts as a bit more of a keep, right? Like it's got the, the hand cannon slot uh, or the hand cannon shot, I guess you could call it. It, get, it can get the Springwood upgrade now and it can also get the cannon emplacement now. So this is a this is a behemoth of a landmark and it probably shouldn't be relegated to the, the gold vein. Like, you know what I mean? Like this, this gold vein, it's not really doing much. You get a cannon emplacement on it and it's just sitting here, just chilling out. Whereas over here, in the middle of the map on a sacred site and a gold vein, and I mean, technically a wood line as well, it's actually achieving quite a bit. So I do like this, even though there's no uh, immediate gain from this. And in, in fact, you could argue that there's a bit of a, a loss here, having to walk all the way out here, but it's a smart move from Salami and definitely future-proofing uh, his gameplay. And I, I do suspect we're going to look to see him take these gold veins at some point in this game, because as I mentioned before, the standard strategy that we see coming out of the Chinese is two town centers into Song Dynasty, into Fast Castle, there's your, there's your Song Dynasty. Two town centers is on the way. He is well and truly looking for that castle or for that uh, that second TC. And I suspect the castle age will be imminent after that. My question is, what, what do the players look to do after that? Because we've got the second town center coming down for DFP already. This is a pretty early town center. Obviously, he did go for the wheelbarrow nice and early. So it means he's going to be a little bit slower on that second TC. But he does eventually catch up with the wheelbarrow build. Uh, interestingly, the wheelbarrow build actually is quite good. Uh, when you're calculating your gathering of gold and stone. Just simply because when these vills, um, when they all line up like this, for some reason, they all have a propensity to kind of move towards the top side of the stone mine. I don't know. You can see right here, like instead of this villager going back over here, he walked all the way down here and they they, they just kind of, they, they always seem to move away. It's a really bit weird. Yeah, oh, there we go. All right. I, I'd be, I could sit here all day and just and study, uh, study these, uh, these villagers on their on their stone mine. Uh, now, another thing to note, you might have noticed a little bit of a change up in the way that we introduce uh, these videos. Now, for anybody who is uh, familiar with YouTube or familiar with my content, I've posted almost 1,500 videos and have introduced pretty much every video the exact same way. I like to welcome you to a custard game or a casted game. Uh, but with my accent, it sounds a little bit like custard. And the reason why we switched up is because one of the things that I, I, I've been studying recently, I've been doing a, a fair bit of research and it said, you know what you should be focusing on? It's keeping those people who are watching your videos for the first 30 seconds. And I said, that's a really good point. So I went in and I had a look at how many people are still watching my video at 30 seconds. And the number might shock you. Now, I don't know if this is just people that kind of click in by accident and then they click out, something like that, but it's pretty low. It's like 25%, 25%. By 30 seconds, 25% of people are still watching my video. So does that mean I'm going to change the way I introduce the video? Yeah, I'm going to change the way that I introduce my video because at the end of the day, uh, you know, I, I want a, a channel to be successful. I want people to be watching my videos. I want them to be enjoying the videos. And if they're clicking out after 30 seconds, they're obviously not. Now, don't get me wrong. You 25% you that are left, <laughs> you guys are obviously enjoying the content. So I hope you don't mind the missing... Uh, I mean, we kept the good eight, fellas, but we're gonna we're gonna get rid of all that other part. And look, there's probably gonna be videos that I post where I do say that other part because I'll just forget about it. Oh my lord, it's three TC coming out for salami. I did not expect this at all. Okay, so three TC. This is this is big. They're, they're, okay, this is something that's very dangerous, and I, I actually did this. Shout out over to Patreon because I'm I'm gonna mention it right now. If you, if you haven't already, check it out. If you want to improve or check out replay reviews or get some private coaching yourself, there's lots of exclusive content over on Patreon. So I'll leave a link in the description. But I actually coached a game. Uh, I think it was at the Conqueror level. And uh, it was English versus China. 3TC English versus 3TC China. And uh, basically, I, I went in and he, he said, my, my student said, what, what could have I done differently here? And I said, you've got to remember that when you're playing 3TC China, there is such a requirement for food here. There is so much food needed to power this. A normal town center is going to use four villages on food to power its, its villages in here. Song Dynasty requires a fifth villager for each town center, which means that these three villagers alone are requiring 15 vills on food just to just to stay afloat. And Salami's got 27, which means that he's only really got about 12 villagers on food because all the other villagers on food are, are being spent on, on villagers. So it requires a lot of resources. And you can see Salami here just not even actually training villagers at the moment, just kind of, I think he's forgotten about it. There, yeah, there we go. He fixes it up. Uh, the, the point is that there's so many resources being invested into these villages right now that there's actually a window for you as the English to kill the Chinese player. Uh, if Divine goes for a white tower, which I would assume he does because that's the pretty standard practice here, he should be looking for an age up. N it depends on, on your build order and how efficient you, you're looking and all that. But normally from 10 minutes, 10 seconds to about 10 minutes, 40 seconds is, is a pretty reasonable time. Um, and 
he could be looking for an age up and he could just punish. Uh, he, he could really punish Salami uh, in, in that early castle period where he can look to go for crossbows from the council hall, spearmen and knights together from the white tower, and then just throw down a whole bunch of production on the front, normally barracks, uh, and then you can look to flood in men at arms. And basically, you can just really put pressure on all the Chinese production. It, as long as you know where the Imperial Academy is, you know where the, the, the production is going to be. And it's going to be around this area. And you just flood in those units, get them in there, bring forward a couple villages, throw down an outpost or two. Your, in, in, your production is going to be so much much higher than the Chinese because the Chinese are just investing all of these resources uh, into their uh, in, into their town centers and as a result they're, they're just going to be behind but we can see that the age up is a little bit delayed here from divine so not getting the quickest of the age ups normally the wheelbarrow age up is a little bit slower uh, than the no bit wheelbarrow age up we've obviously done all the math he looks like he's picked up uh, plus one here as well plus one on everything oh he's got every single upgrade I, I have mad respect for this it's a little bit of a late age up though you can see it takes off about a minute of the age up time when you throw in the wheelbarrow interestingly if you don't open with a wheelbarrow um, the age up time is faster uh, when when you have the the plus one upgrades, it's it's I, I don't know how it works, but you can see that the age ups are coming through. Same time here, only four villagers on the landmark for the moment. But oh no, I think it's happening. He's only got four vills on the landmark because he doesn't care about the speed that it's coming up. He's not going to attack in the castle age. In fact, I don't even think he's going to make a unit in the castle age. I think it's happening again. I think he's going for the fast imperial again. This is the second time we've going to be we're going to be seeing the same strategy out of divine. And the question's going to be whether he can make it work. Whether he learned from the mistakes of the last game that he played. Because, spoiler alert, Salami did take him down in the Imperial Age last time on the Holy Roman Empire. But this time, he's playing the Chinese. A different civilization. A different beast. A civilization that some consider the strongest. I know that... I, I've spoken to people at the top level and I've asked them their opinion. And they have said China is still number one. When you get Imperial Age on China... You go hand cannoneers, you go fire lancers, and you laugh at the enemy as they try and deal with your insane combination of firepower. Will we see that out of Salami today? That's going to be the question. It definitely looks like it. Look at the resources stacking up. Both of these guys with an almost a, a, an agreement between each other. Now, we know that they haven't exchanged any messages because we haven't heard it. Normally, you, you can't see the messages, but you can hear the messages. And I haven't heard a single message. Normally, you, you will hear at the beginning of the game if people say, good luck, have fun, or you will hear them say GG at the end. It's the, the, the exact same sound uh, that comes through, but we haven't heard anything. So there, there is no agreement between these two guys. Hey, you know, 20 minutes, no rush. But it definitely seems it might be the case. And look how quick this age up's coming through. DFP refining the build order quite well here. This is looking a lot faster than his last game. At least a minute faster. Very, very quick here from Divine. Going to be looking to go straight into Imperial. Now, when, when it comes to English Imperial, there's so many reasons why it makes sense. Number one is enclosures. This technology is the best Imperial technology in the game. Even though it's nerfed, it is insane. The landmark Wingard Palace is the best Imperial Age landmark that there is in the game right? So it just makes total sense to go into Imperial Age for the English. Try and get it as quickly as you can. And I think in a passive matchup like this, there's really not going to be a lot that can punish you. Now, granted, had Salami just gone into like 2TC, Song Dynasty, Fast Castle, spamming Palace Guards, Divine probably couldn't have just simply played into Imperial Age. He's, he's playing as a response to not really having a lot of pressure. But look at this. Salami now going to be mixing in some Lancers early on. Now, we saw him do this in the last game. The one thing to note is that the last time we watched him do this, he only moved in with, with a single knight at a time, and it just got completely obliterated, but the age up comes through from Divine. 13 minutes 48. He's got a sub 14 minute timing coming through here, and you can see just how much damage those Lancers are going to be taking. Jeez Louise, you, not a good time to be a Lancer. Not a good time to be a Lancer. 10 damage. Actually, it's, uh, yeah, 10 damage a pop right there compared to the 6 damage of the town center. So for anybody wondering, it is much more efficient to have your villagers in the white tower than it is for a town center. They're getting an extra 4 damage a pop. No wonder those, uh, those lances got obliterated. And beautiful base building coming out once again from Divine. Just immaculate stuff here. Villagers managing to make it into the town center here. He's actually moving into hand cannoneers. We can see he's got two crossbows, two hand cannoneers for the moment. There they are now towards those lances. And you can see Salami trying to slow him down. But at the same time, Salami's still in that castle age. So no sign of a fast Imperial coming out from him. Seems like Divine decided to, uh, to go up a bit earlier. Now, there is a bit of a villager advantage here starting to build as well for Salami. Keep in mind, no villagers have been slaughtered just yet. But the walls are coming up for Divine. He wants to keep these units out. We see a relic getting picked up here. This is a, a, a relic that was considered safe for his opponent. Has been sniped away. And you can see the 
Hand Cannon is looking to try and pick off the Monk here. You can see that, look at the Vils. They're trying their best to wall out this Monk, but it looks like it will make its way out. Lancers do make their way past all of these walls. We've got ourselves a little bit of action already starting to open up, but Villagers, the first of the game, might be finally going down. No textiles means that there's no chance that they even survive. And now more Knights going to be coming through, so Divine not really paying attention. He's sending all the units up towards the north side. He's got more Hand Cannoneers in the queue. Enclosures has been completed. Let there be no doubt Enclosures was researched this game. For anybody wondering why I often reference that, it's simply because in Twitch, sometimes people will be like, ah, oh, he didn't research Enclosures. And it's like, yeah, he did. And there'll be this chat about whether people researched Enclosures or not. So I want you, I want, let it be known. Do we see the Rangers come out here? Is it the rain? Oh no, you know what? They, they got changed, didn't they? Uh, back in the good old day, you used to be able to get hand cannoneers uh, from your Wingard Palace. You don't get that anymore. Your Rangers are just now quite literally longbowmen, but on steroids. Now these guys have got their bows out. Wait, oh, they're English. Okay, I was going to say, how, how are they shooting this, uh, this Lancer? And then I realized they're English villagers. I thought there was a hunt up here or something. But so far, seven workers taken out. And Salami building up a pretty solid lead, not to mention a pretty solid farming economy. Take a look at this Salami just popping off down here. Yet to get his fertilization upgrade. Bit of an oversight here by Salami. Ideally, you want to maximize that. And I'm curious about this, this production layout that he's got. A production layout, but farming layout that he's got. And whether this is... Uh, where, uh, you know, Reddit, I'm calling you out. Do the math. Is Salami's farming layout the superior, the supreme farm layout for the Chinese? Is this the correct way to do it? I don't, I don't actually know what is um, for the Chinese anymore, at least. I, I knew back in the day. But the age up comes through. It's the spirit way. No real surprise there. Four relics in the bag so far for Salami. Fifth one over in the corner. Let's have a look and see. He doesn't actually know where it is. And that's the reason why he hasn't picked up that, uh, that relic just yet. But look at the hand cannon here. So already... Divine has learned from the last game that he played. So for anybody wondering, the last game that we saw Divine go for the, um, the the fast Imperial with the English, he played a style, not a style, he played a composition that was not population efficient. That means that he was making units like the Spearman, like the Crossbow, which are good when you're not maxed out. But once you're maxed out, once you hit that 200 out of 200 population, they become a lot less efficient just simply because the resources that you've invested in your, in your army it's not that much. It's not that much to make a spearman. Compare that to a hand cannon here, where you're paying 120, 120 for these bad boys. That's a lot of resources. So you're getting a lot more efficiency out of the population space that you've got available to you by going into these hand cannoneers. And I see him putting down a lot of barracks, and I'm hoping that he goes into men at arms. I think men at arms, together with the hand cannoneers, work really well together. Now, there, there, there's a problem, and that that you're you're kind of weak to knights or horsemen, but the reality is that hand cannoneers. With the English extra attack speed that they get, keep in mind that they do have access to the network of castles, which can be upgraded to the network of citadels and takes you from 15 to 40%, even though the patch note says 30%. I don't know who to trust right now. But even though it, 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 uh, it gives you all that attack speed, so just when you think that you're going to be, oh no, the enemy's got cavalry, it's like, well, my frontline of men at arms should be able to hold and my hand cannoneers should be able to slaughter them. So that's the thinking. But we're right on board with Salami, though, as he's added in another landmark, the Imperial Palace. He's now entered the Yuan Dynasty. And we can see him also going into Fire Lancers, which is always what scares me. One of the key things against Fire Lancers is Stone Walls. If you want to stop Fire Lancers, the best thing you can do is make sure you're stonewalling your base. And that's exactly what we see him doing. We see him stonewalling up over on the east side of his base. Also going to be taking the larger stone outcropping just to... Make sure that he's going to continue adding in more stone walls over on the west side. Really needs to get these up. It's so important that you get these up against the uh, the the um, these these little guys, these bad boys. <laughs> these watching me call it's down here. These fire lancers. There we go. I finally got it. Really important that you get it against them, just because it's not so much the snipe that you're worried about. And I know at the at the lower levels, like gold, plat, even diamond level, people are worried about the landmark snipes. And the reality is, is that the fire lancers can come in and they can kill landmarks. But at the top level, a lot of people know how to deal with them, right? Like if someone comes in and tries to snipe my landmarks, all I'm going to do is just protect one landmark. That's going to be like my, my go-to landmark. And while I'm protecting that landmark, I'm going to be repairing up the first landmark that you took down. And then by the time you get around to that last landmark that I'm preparing and that I've got all my vills repairing on, my first landmark should hopefully be back up. And now you've got to go back over to that one and it's just not going to happen. You know, if, as long as you keep rinsing and repeating, you might eventually get it. But people at the top level do know how to deal effectively with those Fire Lance snipes. So where the Fire Lances really start to excel is killing villagers. 
Because one of the things that you're going to do when you get attacked by Fire Lancers, you're going to pull all these villagers back and you're going to say, hey, get in the town center. And when they do that, they're going to group up. And the Fire Lancers are going to say, hey, you're all grouped up. Don't mind if I just... And they just take them all out. But we do have a little bit of a passive playstyle. And look at this, throwing away a couple of units on the front. And I love this. This makes total sense. These units, once again, lower efficiency on the population so just throw them away you don't really need them do a bit of scouting with them and look at this hand cannoneers men at arms behind this this is exactly what dfp needed to do in that last game go for a bit more of a heavy investment into that army but at the same time i'm a little bit scared because we've got the best hand cannoneers of each of of, of all the civilizations going up against each other You've got the English hand cannoneers, and you might be like, well, Drongo, there's, there's no bonus here for the English hand cannoneers. Hold on, hold your horses, hold your horses. Network of castles, extra attack speed. That's pretty powerful. And now when, when, then you look at the Chinese side, you're like, well, those hand cannoneers, they're pretty good. Yeah, they're pretty good, all right. Not only do the hand cannoneers have extra range, so for anybody who doesn't know, pyrotechnics um, is a bonus that the, um, the Chinese get, which allow their hand cannoneers to get extra range. So they go from four tiles of range up to 5.5 tiles of range. It's a huge bonus that they get. But on top of that, they also get chemistry for free. So you don't have to research that expensive technology that DFP is currently researching right now. A thousand resources. So that's already that's already researched for him. But on top of that, it's the spirit way. The spirit way allows your units. Let me see if I can find the spirit way. Where are you? You're somewhere around here. I, I, where is the spirit way? Am I blind? There it is. The spirit way. So... Oh, never mind. We'll talk about the Spirit Way later. So what you're going to see is a whole bunch of health bars. We'll enter into the cinematic mode as the Fire Lancers have made it through the wall. And that's a problem. The Stone Wall was coming up, but Divine is now in trouble because Salami says, actually, I, I don't approve of that Stone Wall. It doesn't have council approval. And as a result, I'm just going to run past it. And we're, we're going to have to destroy it. We're going to have to start again. It's exactly like that back veranda that you've been working on and secretly hoping that the council didn't know about. The hand cannoneers are nowhere to be seen right now on this defensive position. Salami begins running in towards the base. There are landmarks in the vicinity. He could look to potentially snipe them. Keep in mind that White Tower here, it's doing a lot of damage and he's actually going to look to snipe it down. You can see just how much damage he's able to do there. Two swings of the Fire Lancers, three swings from the Fire Lancers. I don't think he's going for a snipe here. I think he might just be getting rid of the, the problem child in the middle here and then he'll, then he'll just work on killing all the villagers, but he's lost so many units here. And indeed, the White Tower goes down. All the villagers all stacked up on top of each other. There's plenty of villagers in there. I don't know how many there are, but you can see Salami is just looking to get in on top of them. More villagers going to be escaping at the same time. There's no fighting happening towards the front line. It just looks like Divine's just chilling out there. He's dealing with this threat at home. Veterancy on the spears. No elite upgrades just yet. And you wouldn't really expect elite upgrades at this point, mainly because he's focused. There's the elite upgrades finally coming in, mainly because his focus is going to be on those men at arms together with the hand cannoneers. But it looks like he's going to be able to clean that up and not really deal with too much of a threat from those fire lancers. Now, one of the things that I was going to talk about were these fire lancers and the fact that when they die, the spirit way is going to give them that bonus, that extra 20% attack speed. But on top of that also heals the units that are nearby. Now, you can get that from the Zhukunu. You can also get that from the Fire Lancer. And technically, you can also get it from the Grenadier. But the last time I saw a Grenadier made was 2006. It was a long time ago. Um, so, yeah, people not really using Grenadiers. So, the, the, the main threat that you've got from these hand cannoneers is not only that they've got longer range, but they're also healing. And they've got super fast attack speed from that. But now the Trebs are coming out. We can see that behind the scenes, the hand can or the fire lancers are still running around, but a little bit of a breach through the wall. Salami's going to try and get through. If he's able to get up on top of this wall, it's going to cause havoc for his opponent because not only does he get that extra range from the bonus of pyrotechnics, he's also going to get that extra range. There it is, 7.5 tiles of range. He also gets the reduced attack, so 66% um, damage reduction. You can't fight. You cannot fight this. You have to get back. You have to evacuate. You can see just how much range these hand cannoneers have got on top of the wall. The fast Imperial for DFP. Was it the right decision or not? He's going to continue kiting back away. I think he's picked up his... He does indeed have his chemistry upgrade now, so he's got a little bit more damage. Also holding on with the bombard emplacement, but keep in mind that the cannons from his opponent are slowly pushing back all these walls. He's trying to get the rewall in. Doesn't look like it's going to be successful at the moment. There's just way too many cannoneers, hand cannoneers rather, camping on top. And now the Trebs firing down, not on the walls below them, but rather firing upon the units that are standing on top. Keep in mind the English have got a lot of bonuses that work towards the trebuchets, including shattered projectiles. And at the same time, Fire Lancers looking to make it through. So far, 39 workers have gone down. And now he's going to look to make it even more. 121 workers apiece. 
some spearmen moving forward to try and deal with it. There's plenty of spears back here. He's done a great job of distracting, and you can see the consequence of not getting those walls up has meant that right now, Salami is pushing his agenda really well on this front line. Populations are pretty even when it comes to it, but you can see that DFP is struggling to get units out on the field. He's really struggling with his mass on the front line. The hand cannoneers are just dishing out so much damage on the back. And he, he's got really nothing on the front here. Elite men at arms have come through. He's picked... These guys are fully upgraded, by the way. We enter into the cinematic mode as the trebuchets begin to go down. And if the trebs go down, there's really nothing to contest the bombards at the back. And if you can't contest bombards, you're going to be losing that production. You're going to be losing in this slow push that's coming out. All of these buildings are slowly but steadily going down. The hand cannoneer splits are coming through. Look at him microing like a marine lord. It is, it is impressive, but now more and more units coming to the front. I'm curious, what are the numbers looking like for DFP when it comes to his economy right now? Because I would suspect his food's looking pretty good. It's the gold that we've got to worry about. And you can see he's got plenty of units in queue. It's just that production is starting to take a hit. We once again fall into that situation where there's just not enough buildings to produce the units that you want. Meanwhile, back in the base of Salami, look at the production that he's got just built towards his enemy. It's absolutely beautiful. The key to the late game is a solid production, and that's exactly what we see coming out from Salami in this game. It's starting to look a little bit dire here for DFP. Salami, about 20 population ahead of him. Very bold gold attempt uh, right here from our English player. It's, I'm starting to worry about those poor villagers, though, as the... As the, the uh, the fire lancers run in you can see the aoe damage that gets done on top of them huge amounts of damage and of course they're going to get their little stabby sticks out they don't do a whole lot much with those stabby sticks but it's the explosives that you've got to worry about and those trebs continue going down trebs trying to deal with the clock tower bombards you can see them focusing down but it's just going to be good game dfp zero for two with the fast imperial up against salami it was an absolutely beautiful game from both of these players if you want to check out more make sure you have a look at their Twitches. I'm going to leave links in the description to where you can watch them live over on Twitch. They're probably streaming right now, so go say good day, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.